According to Earth Science Western Australia, 75% of today's fastest growing careers require STEM skills, and 82% of today's employees say that they value STEM skills even if they are not required for the job. STEM skills can also unlock one's potential to earn a higher salary and become more employable. For these reasons, we at Resources for the Blind Philippines, or RBI, through the assistance and support of ICEVI and Nippon Foundation, designed and implemented STEM education programs and activities for blind and visually impaired learners in the country. Hi, my name is Ryan Operario and I'm a math and resource teacher at Zapatera National High School in Cebu City, Philippines. I have an undergraduate and master's degree in teaching mathematics and I am a visually impaired myself. I am here to share with you our journey in implementing STEM education program in the Philippines. Our STEM education program has four key strategies or components. These are development of advocacy materials, loan of assistive devices, development of STEM instructional materials, and capacity building. We developed two types of advocacy materials a brochure, and two videos. The brochure aims to dispel the hesitation of school administrators and professors or educators in accommodating blind and visually impaired learners in their STEM classes. It also features the life story of Ms. Rosel Ambubuyo, who graduated summa cum laude with a degree in mathematics despite being completely blind. On the other hand, the two videos are aimed to share good practices in including or in the inclusion of blind and visually impaired learners in STEM and higher education. The videos also contain inclusive strategies that can be used in teaching mathematics. The loan of assistive devices program has been helping students by allowing them to borrow essential assistive devices such as a netbook or a laptop with screen reader, braille note taker, talking scientific calculator, video magnifier, among others. We have also started to develop and produce 3D STEM instructional materials which are very useful in teaching science and mathematics. At present, we have already developed materials that are useful in teaching lessons on graphing, solid and plane geometry, and trigonometry. Most of the activities that we do in our STEM education program are geared toward capacity building. We provide trainings and seminars to our target stakeholders and in the process, we are able to establish partnerships and areas of collaboration. One of the capacity building activities that we regularly organize is the orientation for school administrators and other key officials. We believe that persuading these people to embrace inclusion and STEM education is crucial in the success of our program. We are also consistently capacitating our special education teachers or SPED teachers as they are at the front line in the education of our learners. Some of the trainings that we offer to them are training on the use of the Cranmer Abacus and training on the Math Braille Code or the Nemes Code. Similarly, we also provide trainings and seminars to regular or receiving math teachers in the elementary, high school, 
and higher education levels. Few years ago, RBI has established a strong partnership with the Department of Science and Technology, which resulted in the conduct of several activities. One of these is the training of science regular and receiving teachers entitled Blind Kids Do Science Too. These science teachers were taught on how to create adapted learning materials in science and on how to make their science class accessible to blind and visually impaired learners. Another activity that RBI and the Department of Science and Technology conduct is the training for elementary math teachers. This training aims to capacitate math teachers in creating appropriate instructional materials in mathematics for our blind and visually impaired learners. In parallel with the different capacity building activities that we provide for our teachers and other stakeholders, we also regularly conduct trainings and other activities for our blind and visually impaired learners. These include training on the use of the Cranmer abacus and training on math or Nemeth Braille code. For the high school students, we conduct math specialty camp to develop their competencies in high school and advanced mathematics. According to statistics, only or less than 20% of our STEM professionals are women. Because of this, we initiated the STEM for Girls project, which aimed to encourage female students with visual impairment to pursue STEM as, uh, as their career. Another major activity that we conduct for students is the training on the use of math adaptive devices and assistive softwares. These include uh, training on the use of the talking scientific calculators, the audiographing calculator, uh, the Caltastic Android application, which is a scientific calculator, and many others. We also conducted a training on LaTeX, uh, which we entitled Reading and Writing Math on the Microsoft Word using NVDA, Math Type, and Math Player. Here are some of the trainings that we conducted during this time of pandemic. In September of last year, we conducted a webinar on teaching STEM for students in the higher education. Another training that was shifted virtually was the training with the Department of Science and Technology for math receiving teachers in the elementary. And despite the challenges of internet related uh, problems, we were able to push through with this training and teachers were able to learn how to create appropriate adapted learning materials in math for blind and visually impaired learners. Finally, we were able to come up with a different activity during this time of pandemic and this is the virtual math coaching wherein yours truly was able to mentor and coach uh, several students with visual impairment across the country on the different areas of mathematics. We know that our system is far from perfect, but we are confident that with the activities that we are implementing, we are able to prepare our students for future careers. Once again, thank you to ICEVI and the Nippon Foundation.